Azure Static Web Apps. This is a hosting option for websites where the pages are pre-generated. So it's suitable for SPAR frameworks like Angular or React or just plain HTML. But it's really just a wrapper around a whole set of other Azure services. So there's a whole bunch of neat things that you get out of the box. So CDN, Content Delivery Networks. So your files are served from edge servers hosted all over the world. So wherever your users are, there should be low latency. CI CD pipelines are the default option uh, and they're automatically created. Uh, multiple uh, deployment environments as well. Not to mention it's pretty much free for most users and there's a whole bunch of other stuff. But in this quick video, I just wanted to really show you how to get started. Okay, so this is the situation. I have a repo in GitHub that is an Angular app that I want to deploy. I'm a big Angular fan, but this works on any SPAR framework, so you can do the same thing with React or Vue if you like. It's freshly generated from the CLI, but it, so it doesn't have a lot, but it does have a few features which I'll run through. So firstly, it's got routing. Um, I've got uh, two pages that I've, I've created, um, and I've also got environment variables here. So I can see different uh, configurations here, and this should modify the behavior based on the environment. So I'll just run ng-serve. Okay, so the page is loaded. So it's nothing fancy, but you can see here, I've got routing working. I've got um, this button that um, changes from page one to page two. And I've got this, um, this text here that will change based on the environment. I figure most apps are gonna be built with several environments and are gonna need some sort of a router. So let's go and create our static web app. I'm now in the Azure portal. So I'll go and create a static web app. I'm just gonna quickly fill this in. Okay, so it's been pre-filled. I'm just gonna run through some of the options. So I've specified a resource group and a name for this uh, resource. I've specified that I will just want the free plan um, and a, uh, an Azure region. I've also signed into GitHub and then, and then specified the repo and the branch that I wanna deploy from. Um, and I've specified that it's a, it should be an Angular app um, noting that there's a whole bunch of other options and under output option, I've specified the folder for where Angular will generate the build. Uh, and in Angular, it will always be something like this slash the name of the app. Uh, and that should be enough for me to hit create. So I'll just do that. And it looks like the deployment is successful. So I'm just going to go to the resource group. And you can see the static web app is there. Looking inside the static web app, I just want to point out two things. First, I've got this URL that's been automatically generated. Um, and second, I've got the source, which is pointing to the repo for where I want to be deploying from. Another thing is that static web apps has also made changes to the repo. So you can see a commit right here. Okay, and there's been two changes. So I'll just run through those. So firstly, there's a new secret. So this secret contains the deployment token that allows GitHub to, to deploy to static web apps. The other change is this YAML file that it's added. So this is a workflow file that specifies the instructions on how to actually deploy to static web apps. So this part here essentially is specifying the trigger. So this workflow will run whenever there's a commit to main. Um, and this part here, will actually do the deployment. Um, notice that it's referencing the, the secret with the deployment token there. So because it's got the CI CD pipelines already set up, deployments are super easy. So all you really need to do is commit to main. So let's just do that now. I'll just make a change. And I will commit it. push it directly to main. I'll show you what happens then. So you can see that there's now a new workflow that's running. If I go into here, it's now just gonna go and deploy that change according to the workflow file. So 
So after a minute or two, you can see that it's completed. And if we go to the, the website now, you can see that it's been deployed. So for the most part, uh, my web app works fine, uh, but I just wanted to point out one common problem. And that's if I navigate to the URL directly. So if I take this URL and I, and I hit enter, I'll get a 404. And this is because a SPAR app is loaded from one index.html file. So for these other addresses that you go to, we need to make sure it routes back to this file. To do this with static web apps, we need to create a special config file. So let me just do that. It's called static web app dot config dot json and you just paste this in there this will navigate all routes back to the root let me just commit this um, and that should automatically kick off the the pipeline and deploy the site looks like the workflow has run so let's check out the website this time I'll just go directly to this link and you can see it's loaded. Up till now, we've pushed directly into main, which triggers the deployment to prod, but it's not really practical to only have one environment. Typically a change might go through several environments before hitting prod. Luckily, staging environments are available out of the box. There's a couple of ways to do this and I'll just show you the default way, which is via pull request. So if you don't know what a pull request is, it's common that whenever you implement a new feature um, to use a feature branch and then use a pull request to merge into main. And this code right here uh, is ass essentially triggering uh, a pipeline whenever a pull request is created. So I'll just demonstrate um, what, what this does. So firstly, let's, um, let's check out a new branch. Yeah. I'll make a change. And I'll check it in. I'll push it. Okay, so that change has now been pushed into GitHub. And you can see that there's two branches here. So let's create a pull request that merges feature into, into main. So I'll just create a pull request here. You can see it goes from feature into main. I will then just hit create. So you can see that after the pull request is created, it also has a couple of extra checks here. And this is the pipeline actually running. Okay, so I can see here that a pipeline's been triggered because of the pull request. Um, and this will actually deploy to a staging environment. And I'll just wait for this to finish. Okay, so it's it's finished. Let's go back to the Azure portal to my static web app. So this is my static web apps. Under environments, you can see that there's now a new environment that's specifically for my pull request and I can browse to it. And once I browse to it, I can actually see that my change is, is there. So the advantage here is that I can actually see the change in action. And if I like it, I can, I can then approve the PR. So I'll just do that. So once I merge the PR, this change will get merged into main. And as you know, that will then deploy into the, the prod environment. This is a job that got kicked off as a result of the merge into main. And now that it's finished, I'll just go into prod. So going to here. And you can see that my prod environment reflects the change made from that PR. Generating new environments from PRs is one thing, but you might also want 
a permanent staging environment. So maybe one for tests and that's, that's easy to set up. So we'll just need to modify our flow. So firstly, let's change the trigger so that the pipeline isn't kicked off for PR. So I'll just comment that out, but it will be kicked off um, whenever there is a commit to main and then also a commit to test. I'll also add this line as well, which is saying that the main branch is my production branch. So for all other branches, create a named environment for it. I'm now going to go into my test environment and make a change and see what happens. So you can see making a change to test has actually kicked off a new run. So I'll just wait for that to finish. Once it's finished, let's go back to the Azure portal. You can see now there's a new environment test. And if you go to the, the website, you'll see the test changes there. Now, one last problem that I have is that the app is saying that I'm in prod when I'm actually in test. So I'll have to modify the workflow to cater for environment variables. I want to add an extra step. And what this does is it sets the environment variable based on the branch. So you can see that if it's main, it'll be prod. If it's test, it'll be test. If it's, and other than that, it'll be development. And I'm also going to need to add a custom build command. And what this line is really saying is that, um, I want to be able to run NPM build to, um, compile the website. Um, but to insert the configuration based on the environment variable that I created in the step above. So let's check that in. So once the pipeline has deployed the site, if I refresh it now, I can see that the environment variable reflects the environment that I'm actually currently in. So in summary, what we've done is we've created an Azure static web app. We've deployed an Angular app to it. We've added support for routing. Then we generated staging environments for pull requests and named environments for specific branches. Lastly, I showed you how to customize each environment using Angular environment variables. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope you found this useful.